All right, guys, so we're just going to dive back into the artwork and just adapt our proof sheet and get that onto our actual template in order to print it. So we'll just go straight ahead and jump into Illustrator. All right, so I've already opened up our master template for a sleeveless round neck top. So I'm just going to copy this proof into our template. Uh, for the purpose of this video, we're just going to do one size. I'm just going to focus on getting this uh, men's medium top. So the first thing I will do is change the color of this to black. So I've already got one set up here, full black. So that's our custom mix to get the deepest um, mix. So this is actually set up wrong for whatever reason. So I'll just quickly change that. We go 50% cyan, 50% magenta, 50% yellow, and 100% black. And that we found it just gets us a nice punchy tone. Um, so we'll just add that to our swatches library and now the next thing we want to do is ungroup everything and we're just going to slowly grab everything off our proof and drop it onto our actual template all right so i've already measured everything up here and everything's in the right position everything's the right size so i literally just need to replace things make sure they're the right color um, so I'll just delete one of these. So we've got 186 for the red there. So I'm not even going to bother to drag that across. I'll just use what I've got here because I know it's the right size and everything. So I'll just select all this and just drop in our red color. All right, so next thing would be getting the actual design on to the template. And grab all this and group it. I'll just group that, copy it. And just stretch that across like this. We don't have to be super accurate because there's a area where it actually bleeds out and the fabric sits inside of this template. So even if we're going outside of it, it doesn't really matter. Um, when I'm designing, I like to keep things really neat um, just for ease of use and all that. So I will cut it out using a clipping mask, but for now I'm not too concerned about getting things 100% perfect. Um, so I just want to copy this background layer, paste it in front, and then I'm selecting everything I don't want in the clipping mask and on a Mac, I would be pressing Command-7. On Windows, we'd be going Control-7. Right. And we want to push all this to the back. We'll grab our numbers. So we want these at the right size. So the right size is 150 mil. Uh, for the front number, it's going to align that to the center, and it's 200 for the back. I'm just copying that, pasting it, and I can see as I'm dragging the cursor, it's telling me the exact measurement. So I want to get that around 200, perfect. I'll just grab this Aquinas text and just drop that in. Right, and everything seems a bit low, so I'll just drag everything back up. Sorry about that phone call in the background there, guys. <laughs> So our Joust logo, we want that about 100 mil wide. And we also need to leave a decent gap from the bottom of the hem because the print actually gets printed onto the fabric and then because there's a hem, we lose about 50 mil. So I like to keep things at about 100. That way we've got 50 mil that's lost and then 50 mil off the actual bottom of the garment. 
So I'm just going to draw in a little guide here. It doesn't have to be perfect, but around about there, I can just delete that. I know it's going to be roughly in the right spot. Um, we're deleting off any logos that we don't need. Um, and once again, we don't need two Joust logos on the back, so we'll just bring that up, cut it, delete that, and paste in place. Alright, so we're just missing the last bit of design, so we'll just grab that from here. Now being a sleeveless top, the top part of it doesn't really need to line up with anything, whereas this is quite important, we need to make sure that lines up. So, actually I'll probably just delete the bit that I copied there, and just keep that top bit. So we'll just align this to the center, stretch it out, I'm pressing S on the keyboard to stretch it. Now I can grab this part from in here, paste it in front, light it with this side and then just reflect it. Once again we can do our clipping mask just to make things look neat. Not essential but it does help to line things up on the press. Alright, so the last thing we want to do here is just make this look a little bit more aligned. So I'm just going to pull up my rulers and just drag down a guide. As I said to you earlier, it doesn't need to line up because the seam isn't going to meet. Uh, but as we can see there, that's pretty far out from where it should be. So I'm just going to select all these parts here. I'm just holding down shift as I'm selecting everything um, and then I can literally just rotate it till it's starting to get a little bit more um, in line and stretch this back down outside of the clipping mask uh, and this we just want to get this away from the edge as much as possible um, on the left hand side as we said earlier that there's a bit of bleed area so we don't want to lose any of the graphic um, I could even just grab this part and move it in a bit further. Um, the screen does lie a bit how it looks as a printed top opposed to on the screen. It's two very different things. So we want to try and keep the artwork as good as possible. Um, but the most important thing to do is just to test print everything and make sure that you know, what you guys are getting before it leaves our factory is exactly how it looked on the proof and how you should expect it to come. Um, so pulling this back out, and I can just stretch this back down. Cool. So that's really it. Um, finish off, we'll just get two of the same number. Um, let's grab this too. Let's zoom into the Joust logo. We don't need that on the front, so I'm just gonna delete that. I'll just resize that to suit a front number. I'm just getting that there. Delete, delete, and we just want to get that at 150. It's not far off it, but we can get it exact by putting in the exact measurement in the transform tool. All right, so that top is officially set up. Just want to make sure we're just looking over things. Um, to me, the last thing that looks a bit off is this size for the Joust logo here compared to this one. It just looks miles bigger, so I'm just going to reduce that back by about 10%. So I drop that down to 90. Um, and I might just give this one a little bit more size. Not much, just 5%. It is a much smaller area up there. Alright, so things are looking pretty good. Um, Yep, and final thing, the actual height of that, just want to do some fine tuning here. Alright, I'm just going to draw a box for a guide. Yep, copy that across. And then we can just pull this anchor up a bit so that way. It's just going to look a little bit more consistent from front to back. Um, they're not actually meeting, so it's not essential that we get it perfect, like the side panel, but it is important to 
try and keep it looking like it's going in the right place. All right, and then we can just delete that off. And if we were to draw an imaginary line, that should meet up fairly good. Um, right. So last thing to do here is we can just save it. Um, just make sure that there's no swatches on the artboard that don't need to be there. All right, so that's all ready to go. And we can just save that to our RIP file. So the way our system set up is it's running all on a external network hard drive, which is our NAS. Um, and then we've got a RIP computer, which can read all the files off of that um, NAS, the, um, the network drive. And that would send it to our machine, our printer, um, which would then get printed onto paper. And then we've got to cut the papers off and then press them um, with our heat press. So I'll just save this file up and we can go over to the next step. All right, guys, we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in.